Jones. Hey, we're up here at Old Garden Beach in uh, Rockport, Massachusetts, getting ready to gear up and uh, do a night dive. And uh, hey, it's a nice night for it. Sun's going down, people playing on the beach. And I uh, want to do some, uh, get some fluorescence footage, both uh, still and video. And I've got a pretty simple setup here. It's a nice compact housing. This is actually all pretty old stuff. It's a Canon PowerShot G10 in a fixed housing. And the, the two main ingredients you need for doing fluorescence are a light source that's going to excite the fluorescence and then a barrier filter that's going to block the reflected excitation light and transmit the fluorescence. And I also like to uh, switch back and forth between white light and fluorescence modes in order to, uh, you know, to show that comparison, to show the real change of what's going on. I'm going to take a moment here and show you just how this fluorescence thing works. Here's a flower illuminated with white light. This is a Queen Anne's lace. Now with blue light alone, this really doesn't look very interesting. Looks like we're shining blue light on the flower. And finally we add the yellow filter in place. That takes away the blue light. lets you see the fluorescence. Uh, and uh, quite different. And the red you see in the stems of the flower, that's, that's uh, red fluorescence from chlorophyll. You're going to see a lot of red fluorescence in the video later and that's all uh, chlorophyll and algae uh, underwater. And the same thing with a naturally fluorescent mineral sample. Here it is under white light. Now blue light alone. And blue light with a yellow barrier filter in place. For the excitation source, I've got a, a light in motion, so a night scene light mounted on uh, ultralight arms with ball mount. And uh, so this light has, is your uh, powerful blue light. It's got flood mode, spot mode, and three intensities in each mode. And then if you, uh, if you want white light, you just put the remote phosphor cap on it, and you've got a white light source uh, you know, right at hand for both night for white light filming or just to see where you are. Now for the filters, because I like to do white light and fluorescence, I'm constantly taking filters on and off, and that would be a pain to be screwing them in and out underwater. So what I've got is on the front of the camera, and I'm just going to unscrew it part way. You can see I'm unscrewing something. This is a thing called a zoom adapter, X-U-M-E. They make this cool adapter. You put one piece into the front of the camera. You put another mating piece on the back of the lens. And then when you put the lens on, it just snaps on magnetically. So it's easy on, easy off, uh, holds really nicely. Go back and forth. Now, I also want to fool around with close-up, so I've got a external uh, close-up lens, ion close-up lens, and that's also got the, uh, the filter ring on, the uh, magnetic ring on it, so that just snaps on. And I've got the, the mating piece on the front of that, so I can further stack that, and now I can do close-ups uh, in either white light or fluorescence, extra macro. And I want a place to store this during the dive, then I'm not going to lose it. So I made myself a little, uh, little filter box that mounts on the ultralight arms, and it's got a slot for the filter, it's got a slot for the lens, Velcro to close it so you don't lose it. Uh, and that's really pretty much it. Camera, housing, light source, uh, filters. The only other thing I've tricked this out with uh, I've got the lock line fittings here, and on the end of it is a magnifying glass, so I can see the back of my display better. I know with a lot of modern cameras, you can buy a magnifier. And the only other thing that rounds it out is this looks bigger than everything else, but this is a little home homemade tripod I made, so I can mount the camera on there, uh, get some nice steady video, or have it steady for still photography. So it's a, it's a pretty simple setup. Let's get to it. 